In this short video, we are going to review some of the higher level Gluster architecture concepts. So Gluster is an open source scale out storage solution. It's an all software solution designed for storing unstructured file data. Our belief is that the right way to solve storage problems is with software, and we can do it in both the data center and public or private clouds. The software is a complete storage solution. You can think of it as a complete storage operating system with a flexible backend that supports direct attached, network attached, or SAN hardware, commodity JBoard, and cloud storage as well. It has a high performance global namespace, so it aggregates all disk and memory resources into a single unified pool, and we've optimized it for both public and cloud environments. It's a true scale out operating system. It deploys on commodity hardware. You add storage servers in building block fashion. We've eliminated the metadata bottleneck by going from a metadata server model to one that uses only an algorithm. The result is that performance and capacity scale linearly and independently as you can add disks or compute and IR resources independent of the other. We've built in multiple resiliency functions. We do file level replication across two or more nodes. We do self-healing. And importantly, we store data on the backend disk in an NFS-like native format. So we haven't introduced a proprietary format. And regardless of whether Gluster is in the solution, you can access your data with standard OS tools. Given that we're talking about large enterprise deployments, we wanted to make it easy to use. One of the things we've done is created a modular design, which is easy to stack and combine in different ways to meet different workloads with open APIs to build into larger solutions. It's compatible with existing applications and existing disk file systems. It's 100% POSIX compliant, so you don't need to change existing applications or replace your existing hardware. One of the most powerful trends that we see in the IT industry is the fact that open source software plus commodity hardware has transformed many industries. We've seen it in the database market, in the server market, in multiple other areas as well. Gluster is now bringing that to the storage market. And while we are a, a small and growing company, we've been proven in many enterprise deployments. We have over 300 production deployments and a worldwide community of over 1,000 developers. So bringing both a lot of experience and key features for today's trends to the table. Here's a high-level view of what the Gluster architecture looks like. Now, one thing that's important to keep in mind is this picture looks the same whether you're talking about deploying in your own data center or in a cloud infrastructure. Gluster installs on standard industry servers, and these build storage building blocks. These are standard storage servers which you can think of as a file server. You add them together as many as you need, depending on what your I.O. and uh, compute requirements are, and they're all aggregated together into a single global namespace. That global namespace includes all of the backend storage capacity, and we're very flexible in the way that we allow you to attach backend storage. We can attach direct attached or standard JBot arrays, and we can even sit in front of a SAN and make it look like a file system. We're network agnostic, so we support standard gigi, 10 gigabit e, or InfiniBand networks, depending on what your performance and throughput requirements are. We support multiple clients, multiple protocols on the client side. We can scale to thousands of clients and hundreds of storage servers and petabytes of capacity. On the client side, you can run the Gluster native client. That's mostly applicable to customers who have highly parallelized workloads. We also support a native NFS implementation in our software stack. That allows you to um, operate with no client side installation on the client side server. And we also support protocols like SIFS, HTTP, WebDAV, and FTP. And we've designed the product so that it's addressing the needs of the modern data center. And here's what we mean by that. We have throw for everything to be completely virtualized. So that means the underlying disk and hardware is completely uh, pooled into a single global namespace. None of the data is tied to any specific piece of hardware. And it's multi-tenant. Everything's a logical volume. Those logical volumes are also not tied to a particular piece of hardware. And they can share multiple users and multiple departments in a single virtual volume. And those volumes can be aggregated into the global namespace. It's important in the highly dynamic environment that we're operating in today to be able to scale on demand. We're well past the point where people would buy two or three years worth of capacity and expect to grow into it. Things change dynamically. Unstructured data is exploding at an incredible rate. Gluster allows you to easily add, migrate, or remove both physical and virtual volumes with no downtime. And given the scale that we're operating at with today, everything needs to be automated. We can't manage everything with one person through a single GUI or command line interface. We're at a point where data center managers are operating at a cloud scale type level. And to do that, you have to have automation. Gluster's built a unique console manager that takes the CLI and integrates it with an API shell. 
So as long as you can script something, you can automate it. And one of the powerful things to address both scalability and the economics of, of the modern world is the combination of open source software and the scale-out commodity hardware model. So one of the key issues with Gluster is we have adopted the Afero general purpose license for cloud-dominated infrastructure. It takes the existing GPL and it ensures that the proper copyleft and community contributions are preserved even when the software is being used to deliver services over a network. And we treat storage as a software problem. In a lot of ways, this is the way companies like Amazon or Google treat their storage issues. Large amounts of commodity hardware clustered together. We design the software to be resilient and have all the intelligence in the software. And it's actually designed so that we expect things to fail at the hardware level. And the software takes care of everything. And what that means is our software is flexible enough to address the three key use cases that we're seeing in the industry today. So those are on-premise NAS, virtual machine storage, and cloud storage. On-premise NAS providers are looking to overcome the capacity and performance limitations of their existing NAS systems, and often looking at their expensive scale-up SAN infrastructure and realizing that there's a way to get just as good reliability, just as good manageability at a much lower cost than they are today. We provide the ability to scale capacity and performance independently. It's centrally managed as an aggregated pool, and the economics are compelling. As customers are looking to adopt storage to sit next to the virtual server environments, it's important to note that virtual machine images are just files, and NAS is designed to store files. And so we have a scalable NAS solution that's easily shared and is an excellent complement to virtual machines. It's virtual storage for virtual machines. Compared to a SAM, we provide better shared data access. It's lower cost. It's easier to manage. You're not managing lots of individual lung connections. And given the adoption of 10 gigabit E and InfiniBand on NAS, we can offer even better performance than a SAM can provide. Ultimately, and even today, people are moving towards a cloud environment. And in a cloud environment, you're delivering IT services as a utility over the network. You can't predict what's going to happen. Growth happens very quickly and, uh, and without uh, much warning. You need to be able to scale elastically. We've built in a lot of capabilities into our Elastic Volume Manager. Applications need to be accessed over the network, and they don't need to be changed just to take advantage of what the underlying hardware or software infrastructure is. Gluster is POSIX compliant, so you can access Gluster stores with standard commands and don't need to write to new APIs. As we discussed before, it's designed to be multi-tenant and works the same whether it's in a public or a private cloud environment. A little bit more on the architecture advantages. We touched on the fact that Gluster is trying to design Google Stores for everyone. This is a recognition that over time and increasingly, enterprises, service providers are looking to deploy storage off the shelf that has the characteristics of something you would see in an internet giant like Google or Amazon. You have to build the intelligence into the software. You do it by clustering these commodity machines together. You make sure you have elastic scalability. You don't worry about the reliability of the underlying hardware. You take care of that in the software. And because virtualization is so key to enabling all these trends, and we're a software-only solution, we get it much closer to a fully virtualized environment quickly. So as we get towards that model, we look at building something that doesn't have a metadata server. So we have a fully distributed architecture with no bottleneck. We employ an algorithm that we call the Gluster Elastic Hashing Algorithm that removes this bottleneck, that removes this key potential vulnerability to failure, and truly paralyzes all data access. So when you're talking about scaling to the levels that people need today for the unstructured data explosion, this is a way to do it linearly and truly paralyze all the data. The global namespace virtualizes all of the underlying disk and memory resources, and it can scale to the hundreds of petabytes that people need today. And from a performance standpoint, we support technology like 10 gigabit Ethernet and InfiniBand in order to uh, meet environments that have the most stringent performance environments. Availability is taken care of on multiple dimensions. We do file rep replication across two or more servers, and that's a key way to ensure that data is always available, even in the event of a hardware failure. In the event of a failure, which we assume will happen at some point, we have built-in mechanisms for self-healing, and the data itself is stored in a native NFS-like format, 
in order to make sure it's always accessible and there's no proprietary data formats that would make that a barrier. And the world we live in today has a wide range of mixed workloads. And in order to address that, you need a large sweet spot for where you can get good performance. So Gluster has designed a solution that's very stackable and runs only in user space. First of all, this means that without the kernel dependencies involved with a kernel-based file system, it's easy to install, it's very portable and available on lots of different platforms. Because the modules in Gluster can be combined in different ways and configured or used if necessary or not, we can match specific workload profiles to a particular Gluster configuration. This ensures a very large sweet spot for, for great performance. It also means we can bring features to market really quickly. We can write modules for specific capabilities, for specific market needs, and we don't have to wait for things like kernel support or other Linux distribution support. We're building these things into a user-based application. A little bit more on the modular and stackable architecture. So as we discussed before, Gluster is a complete storage operating system, and it runs entirely in user space. As far as Gluster concerns, everything is a volume. And what we mean by a volume is a volume is a shared, or is, excuse me, is a C shared object library. You combine these volumes together to create your particular file system configuration. That means you get to match your unique workload needs to how you've, how you've configured the file system options. The APIs allow individual modules to talk to each other and it allows outside applications and administrators to interface with the file system itself. It makes it easy to integrate Gluster into higher level solutions. In fact, development, or hacking if you prefer, is a lot like application programming. If you're a skilled C programmer, you can build Gluster modules and you can see the internals of Gluster and how they work. That also means great support from our community, uh, interesting ways that the product's deployed and modified in the community, uh, new ideas that come from the community that we can work into the core product, uh, rapid time to market, and great third-party input. We've talked a little bit about elasticity and how that is critical for an environment today, both in the data center and the cloud, where applications, users, and the environment in general is very dynamic. That means you need to have an elastic capability built into the product. So we've ab abstracted the logical volumes from the hardware. They're logical volumes that can grow, shrink, and even migrate across physical systems. You can think about volume migration as analogous to vMotion for storage volumes. And Gluster takes care of all the automatic rebalancing, the Gluster Elastic Hashing Algorithm keeps track of where everything is, and you don't need a centralized metadata server. You can do all these things without interrupting your applications or services. That's critical, whether you're talking about physical resources or virtual resources. Everybody needs their data online all the time. And one of those things that is a benefit of that is you can actually introduce file system configuration changes, and they'll be accepted at runtime. So you don't need to restart services, restart the file system in order to modify the way that the file system is configured. This allows you to react to changing workloads, unpredictable events, and even do things like live performance tuning. And we've built a native NFS stack, which is NFS v3 compliant, into the Gluster server. And you can access Gluster storage via a client running the Gluster native protocol or the old standard NFS. And Gluster will take care of all the management of the back-end storage. The advantage to native NFS is you don't need to install a client-side application. It's probably applicable to 80% of the workloads that are out there. If you have an application that's highly parallelized, then the Gluster native file system might be a better choice. A little bit more on the console manager. The console manager is designed at making large-scale autom automation very simple to do. So it's a distributed management framework. You can manage the cluster from any system in the namespace. What we've done is taken a standard CLI and added API and shell scripting capabilities to make it a single powerful interface. So you can invoke commands via the CLI, either by scripting or other mechanisms, that automate things at a large scale. So if you can script it, it can be automated. And it doesn't require any unique languages or bindings. It's standard scripting tools like Python, Ruby, PHP, Java, etc. Whatever your favorite tool is, it'll work. We also have the Gluster storage platform version of the product. It takes the file system, it packages it with a operating systems layer and a GUI installer and management interface. It's a single stack that installs on bare iron. It's designed to provide ease of use and management on an on over an ongoing period. It's a single pane of glass for managing all of your Gluster environment. It also includes access to the Gluster support network and it does all the key management things that you think it would do such as resource management, logging, reporting, analytical tools, resource utilization, 
etc. So that's a quick high-level view of the Gluster architecture. Thank you for your time.